Well, in the fog of war, there was always a lot of confusion about right and wrong and who is responsible for what atrocities. The line between good and bad, heroes and vi villains, is often blurred. The civil war in Syria is no exception. The United Nations Independent Commission of Inquiry on Syria has compiled evidence suggesting that rebel forces and not President Assad's army might actually be the ones using chemical weapons in the country. The investigators interviewed doctors and victims as well as witnesses about the use of the nerve agent sarin gas in the country and investigator Carla De Ponte actually told the BBC that there is quote strong concrete suspicions but not yet incontrovertible proof that rebels were using the gas instead of the Assad forces. Since then the UN Commission of Inquiry on Syria has stated that they have not yet confirmed this. To talk more about these developments, RT correspondent Anastasia Cherkina. Anastasia, can you tell us the latest, uh, what this commission is, first of all, and what the latest developments are? Well, uh, Megan, these developments are certainly very significant when it comes to the whole Syrian crisis. This commission in particular was established back in August 2011. It's Geneva-based and comprises really uh, big experts and re re veterans of uh, human rights. And uh, the goal of this commission is to follow the human rights, alleged uh, human rights violations taking place in Syria. And uh, particularly with this latest revelation, we are in fact hearing from the commission saying that uh, they have gathered enough testimony from uh, casualties and local doctors on the ground treating the injured in Syria, basically uh, uh, showing enough proof, enough uh, suspicions, as they say, to uh, claim that uh, the rebel groups, the opposition groups, are using sarin gas, a chemical weapon, uh, considered a weapon of mass destruction, on the ground. And this is, of course, against international law. And they did themselves say that they're kind of flabbergasted by uh, discovering this. And in fact, they're not saying that it's the Syrian government, as the U.S. has been claiming, uh, that's using chemical weapons, but in fact, the opposition groups. So, Anastasia, when can we expect those findings to come out, the final decision from this inquiry group? Well, uh, Megan, uh, the, this is a work in process. Of course, uh, as we both mentioned, this has not been firmed up yet, and they're working on uh, finding more uh, evidence at this point, and their next report is expected to come out next month, which should shed more light on exactly uh, what, because we still, they haven't said anything on when these instances took place and how they took place. So this is yet to come. But, you know, it's important to note that all of this comes at a time when just days after the U.S. started uh, uh, really beating its chest, saying that uh, the Syrian government, the Assad, regime has uh, been using chemical weapons with uh, you know uh, so-called uh, as they called it varying degrees of confidence so that this is definitely a big game changer and if this position this uh, uh, claim from this international commission is uh, supported by facts and if they do this this is definitely a big game changer when it comes to the Syrian crisis now Anastasia on one hand we had President Obama come out last week and say this exact thing that you just said that there are varying degrees of confidence that he's not willing to put all of his eggs in one basket and say concretely that this is being used by the al-Assad regime. Um, but in the press conference today, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney was skeptical of this report's findings. So why is the U.S. outwardly rejecting this report without possibly looking into it further? Megan, uh, that's a good question. Uh, in fact, yes, uh, the White House statement was that they're highly skeptical about this latest report. But, uh, you know, the answer to this question is simple. The United States has a specific uh, kind of line of interest in this, in this crisis. And, uh, of course, to remind our viewers, there has been a major kind of standoff between Russia, China versus the U.S. and the West, in particular at the United Nations, uh, where they were trying to kind of uh, fi find some kind of solution to the Syrian crisis because uh, Russia has been uh, blocking any attempts from the U.S and the West to uh, try to uh, put in place a regime change in Syria. And uh, so, you know, it's not in America's interest to support uh, this line, to, to say that it's actually the rebels and not the Syrian government, as they have been claiming, that uh, is now said to have been used, uh, the chemical weapons. And of course, also importantly, uh, this week, uh, U.S. Secretary of State is going to be in Moscow trying to argue the case that chemical weapons uh, are used by the Syrian government in Moscow to convince, Mo to try to convince Moscow to change its position, something that's going to be very hard to do with uh, especially these latest statements. And Anastasia, we heard over the weekend a bunch of Republican senators actually come out. We've heard Lindsey Graham and uh, John McCain and Mike Rogers all saying that the red line has been crossed and then that U.S. needs to take decisive action. They all were very hesitant to say that uh, boots need to be on the ground, but that yes, decisive action needs to happen. And considering the fact that this information is still coming out, a lot of critics are comparing this to the weapons of mass destruction claims in Iraq. Can you talk a little bit more about that? 
Right, Megan, that's an interesting comparison uh, and definitely one that comes to mind because uh, the Iraq war was started under false pretenses claiming the existence of weapons of mass destruction that were never to be found later. And in this particular case, again, we're hearing the WMD cheers used as a pretense uh, to kind of, uh, you know, rally up uh, the public opinion uh, when it comes to the Syrian crisis. And uh, certainly the comparison is uh, legitimate and uh, it is quite dangerous, according to many analysts, to try to uh, take any further steps steps without establishing exactly who it was and how and what kind of chemical weapons, if any, were used. So definitely, uh, you know, while the Republicans are cheering the usual tune, certainly many people are uh, asking for cautious and cautiousness, and that's certainly something that uh, hopefully the officials will consider, uh, name, uh, specifically here in the United Nations, for one. That was RT correspondent Anastasia Cherkina with that report.